Along this line of respect, someone asked this question, when you have a strong-willed child, how do you pick your battles? And I love that question because it says, when you have a strong-willed child, not if you have a strong-willed child. Um, every child has a strong will. Uh, if you have two or three or four children, one will probably have a little stronger will than the others. But all of us have a will that is bent on self. And the fact of the matter is that while we preach about idolatry in the sense of, you know, idol worship or materialism, the biggest idol is self. And uh, every single one of us have a bent toward selfishness, uh, which in turn brings about a strong will. And, and it really does take discernment to know when uh, to deal with that head on. You know, I think of Hebrews 4.12 where the Bible teaches that the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. But it also says that the Bible is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And when I think about this question, how do you pick your battles? I think a parent needs to be in the Word and following the leadership of the Holy Spirit in order to discern. Because one of the worst things that you can do as a parent is to make a guess at your child's heart at that moment or really jump on a child for what you perceive to be a strong will. Now there's times when it's obviously a strong will and they are they're speaking back to you disrespectfully. That cannot be tolerated. Uh, there's other times when a teenager is going through a, a moment of trying to gain some independence and it's awkward for you to see that, but it's not necessarily rebellious from them. So the question is, when do you pick the battle? And uh, I would simply say this, that when there is direct disobedience or disrespect and shown to, to you in the sense of a uh, rebellious spirit that is obviously a spirit of anarchy towards authority, then you must act. Uh, if there is a strong will to walk out of the door when you said stay here, if there is a strong will that says I'm not going to church, I don't care what you say, they have picked the battle. You don't have to pick the battle, they chose the battle. Now that doesn't mean you get in the flesh and scream, it doesn't mean that you start you know, physically abusing them, but it just means that you say look, uh, we're not going to do one thing further in life until we get this dealt with. And uh, whether that means they come in to see the pastor, uh, come, come to see a youth, uh, youth pastor, uh, whether that means you take them to a restaurant and you spend significant time talking, um, you have to deal with that. But let me just say this with respect to the strong-willed child. Before you get to that point of having to pick a battle, why don't you determine that you're going to build an arsenal of love so that you never have to get there in that battle. In other words, um, why don't you ask the Lord to give you the wisdom to build into the relationship enough love and respect from your side that when the battle comes, uh, you already are on the winning side. Now, I don't mean by this permissiveness, and I don't mean by this allowing temper tantrums. But what I am an advocate of and what I believe the Bible teaches when it says that we're to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, uh, we know that admonition involves discipline. But nurture involves the cultivation of a heart. It involves relationship. It involves uh, a random trip to McDonald's after school or a surprise trip to a baseball game. Uh, it involves uh, finding out what their interest is, is and taking them to a car show or whatever. And so uh, when you have that strong-willed child, oftentimes what they need is the investment of your time. And so I would encourage you to nurture them. But I also would encourage you to deal with scornfulness uh, because uh, you can't stand for that direct scornfulness. And so uh, if there's an outburst of rebellion that is disrespectful, deal with it right away. If it's the shrugging off of a shoulder or sort of a body language type of a situation, then mark your time for that battle. You don't have to explode right then and there. Uh, make a note of it, pull them to the side maybe that afternoon, maybe at McDonald's and say, hey Joe, this morning when I, when I said to you as you were heading to school, uh, don't forget to meet me at 315 at the parking lot, you kind of shrugged off your shoulders and 
you showed a will there, and it literally was a disrespectfulness in the front of your in front of your peers, and I really don't think that's honoring to the Lord. And try not to make it always about you and them, but try to help them realize. Look, at, we want to honor the Lord in how we conduct our relationship one with another.